now we have the big two from TCS, Rajesh Gopinathan and Sami Saksaria. Let me take it from, you know, my macro angle. I cover economics. And what the IMF tells us, 21 growth was 6% for global economy, 22 <coughs> was 37 and uh, 23 is going to be 2.1. I mean, it's huge. I mean, just what red flags in your world? See, the, our business is on a very focused customer set, um, both from a market perspective as well as from a client universe perspective. So uh, the way I would look at it is rather than try to parse the overall um, big global economy picture, if you go to large enterprises mm. in the big large markets like US, UK, Europe, which uh, together constitutes uh, somewhere in the range of uh, you know 80%, 85% of our business. And as I said, again, we are talking of large enterprises. Uh, one way to look at it is that uh, enterprise balance sheets have never been as strong as they are today compared to five years ago or 10 years ago. So balance sheet repair has happened. The EC money actually resulted in a fairly good um, uh, disciplined execution on that side. The uh, financial markets, of course, react to the repricing of the asset on terms of the, where the interest rate is. But when we are uh, looking at actual individual companies, they are more impacted by the supply chain issues, which have kind of played out through the year. Uh, they are, in fact, on the, uh, the absolutely on the, uh, them getting mended. Uh, geopolitical issues in uh, Europe will continue to have an impact, especially for that market and for some of the long supply chain uh, kind of uh, industries. But others in UK, in uh, US, uh, they're in a much more stable situation. So our own view is that uh, there is, will be some impact of the overall negative commentary that is there in decision making. But when we take, a, let's say, a six month view or a 12 month view, uh, we are much more uh, you know, positive because we believe that our client universe, uh, their underlying business is in good shape. And uh, that is what is driving our positive outlook on the, our business okay. compared to where the overall economic commentary is. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Samir, I, I wanted to ask you about the margins. It's impressive that at a time like this, you are, uh, you know, not only delivered better margins than quarter ago, you're promising to exit uh, at 25%. How are you so sure and what led to that improvement? Okay, fair. So I think uh, this is still an aspiration, but we have put it out uh, uh, at the beginning of the year when we uh, gave our full quarter increments and we came in at 23.4. We said we want to exit this year at 25. And structurally, we have worked towards it. If you see in uh, both last quarter and this quarter, we have been able to get uh, improvements. Uh, two specific parts to it. One is uh, uh, we have been focused on execution rigor and bulk of it is coming from the execution rigor, whether it was in terms of uh, uh, the churn which we went through the last year and uh, the capacity building which we invested into last year, that coming into productive capacity and uh, helping us on the uh, utilization side, realization, the factors which we called out. And there is still definitely. space over there? Uh, there will be operational levers uh, from an execution rigor perspective, which always will be there fees to external consultants still provides us an opportunity. There will be always be puts and takes in terms of uh, how it would set up. Second factor is currency has been beneficial to us. And uh, at that also we have been calling it out. We that do. may not be there this year, we are told. Let's hope. <laughs> Rajesh is talking about uh, Q3. What explains why you didn't see higher furloughs when your peers did and called out specifically? I think it's a question of, I mean, it's been quite a few years also, uh, Rima. So to uh, exactly, and to say that it is higher or lower, the variations are not that uh, material to be a commentary item. So what we have said is that it is regular, it is coming from the same. Uh, so we have more than the volume. Uh, we have put our commentary based on where is it coming from, uh, which markets is it coming from, which industries is it coming from. Are we seeing something completely surprising? Some industry that never used to do furlough, standing up and talking about furlough. So none of that has happened. The actual volumes, uh, it's not that material to be, the variation is not material enough to be called out. 
Uh, Samir, you've announced a special dividend, as in the board has announced a special dividend of 67 rupees. Does this rule out a potential buyback? Because the window for uh, the next board, uh, a buyback announcement, is in the next couple of months. So should we expect no buyback from TCF? So, uh, see, a capital allocation policy has been consistent. Yes. And if you look at uh, technically, as the regulations currently stand, we couldn't have done a buyback Correct. in this year. We completed our last buyback uh, because it has to, yeah, at the end of March. So if we had to do something in this year, uh, the buyback option wasn't available. Uh, on an ongoing basis, we look at a combination of uh, various uh, uh, measures of uh, distributing cash flow, and it could be both dividends so as well as So a buyback could be on the cards in Q1, FI24, when you are eligible? That's always an option available. Okay. That's the nearest you will come, is it? <laughs> okay, Rajesh, I'll tell you, you know, from what the uh, investors took home, the two big fears are that uh, your TCB, your total contract value, was only 3% higher. Last year, it was 10% higher. Your total workforce is actually a few thousand lower. Both these look like 23 is going to be difficult. Uh, Lata, actually, I, I should have had that number, but... Um, our TCV is now, earlier it used to be in the 5, 6, 6.5 billion range. Now it is consistently staying in the 7 to 9 yes, uh, billion range. Yes. So on an average, if you compare it, because TCV by nature is uh, volatile. Yeah. So on an average, we are not, uh, you know, we are in quite a good uh, shape. And we have always said that uh, the multi-billion dollar deals are one-offs. And that needs to be, uh, you know, you cannot predict as to when it will come. So overall, TCV trend lines uh, and... So there are three layers to it, right? Overall pipeline, qualified pipeline, and then the TCB. <coughs> Everything is in a fairly good uh, shape. Uh, we are specific, the place where there is weakness, we call that out in Europe, where qualified pipeline is, continues to grow, but the actual uh, decision-making and uh, closure on the contract side is getting uh, delayed. And there we see a, a definite uh, decline, which is where our commentary on Europe is a bit uh, you know, much weaker than what it is about the rest of it. Whereas if you take US or UK, uh, deal closures are continuing at a fairly good uh, clip. In fact, UK had specifically called out, uh, though the overall operating environment is challenged, actual decision making is very positive and uh, people are moving forward with uh, transformative uh, projects. Okay. Uh, Rajesh, you were confident, you are confident about a double digit growth this year, FI23. Are you as confident? How are you thinking about double-digit growth for FI24? <laughs> you know, this is a milestone quarter for me. Uh, this is my 40th quarterly. Congratulations. <laughs> so batting back this <laughs> question again and again. Uh, but uh, so keep that in here, yeah, that we don't want to get drawn into making a specific uh, comment. But uh, otherwise, as I said, uh, these two years have been a fairly strong growth years. Uh, the next year is like a more a balanced year, a consolidation year, on both on the revenue side as well as on the overall profitability uh, side. Uh, uh, the perspectives are very different depending on the markets. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important one is that we have a divergence in U.S. between what mm -hmm. the larger commentary is and what our own perspective is. In Europe, we are fully aligned <laughs> to where the, <laughs> the macro, macro commentary, micro commentary. And UK, we are uh, executing totally differently. In UK, we are now uh, by far the largest technology services provider. So significant uh, market share gains, uh, significant growth, uh, very clearly highly differentiated uh, positioning. All of that is uh, playing out. So overall, uh, it's a good, uh, I just used this analogy earlier that it's a good test pitch. Okay. Uh, there's so something in it for you. 15% which comes from Europe, you see, is under threat. Uh, Absolutely, where there is clearly, and another 15-20% which is from all the other markets, about 15%, they are very volatile to call, so they are difficult to call in any given year. Okay. And the 15% euro, uh, which has been a big growth driver for us till last year, mm. uh, that is off the boil and uh, likely to remain soft. Uh, in the near future. Mm. Uh, Rajesh, on the conference call yesterday, you said that you have won 20 optimization-focused large deals in the first nine months of this year versus 16 in the similar period of the previous year. So 20 cost optimization deals versus 16. What would the same number be for growth and transformation where we are seeing some slowness? I don't off the I have it, which is one of the reasons why I hesitate to give these numbers, but uh, I don't have the cut on the other side. But is it significantly lower? The... Uh, 
Not, uh, I, I say so on a quarter on quarter basis, our deals have been equal. That is between uh, Q2 to Q3. Okay. Uh, so on GNT? No, overall. overall. So to that extent, uh, yes, GNT will be. But uh, on that, uh, this thing, on a larger one, uh, larger period, I don't know the number. Okay. And if one big geography, that's Europe, which is about 15% of your revenues, is challenged, should, is it not fair to assume that FI24 growth could be lower than FI23? It's not getting a, into numbers, I mean, but... See, that's the realm the for data. the people who are going to make a bet on Focus. the stock. But uh, for us, it's more about playing the market as it is. As it, so, as I said, our, uh, our stance in North America is very uh, forward. Sure. In... Uh, our stance in UK is very uh, forward. Our stance in uh, Europe is a bit more on the back foot. And we are playing it for individual ones and twos and you know, scoring where we can. Has pricing played out, Samir, the way you anticipated the increase in pricing? Like I called out, uh, we are getting uh, uh, pricing uh, improvements on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, given the inflation which the world has gone through, uh, overall, the expectation would have been that, uh, as a CFO at least, we would have seen uh, much higher uptick uh, that uh, is yet to come. And pricing reflects also over the quarters. It doesn't reflect in one quarter. But realization definitely has seen an uptick sequentially as well as year on year. So it's played out as per your expectation. Realization uptick has been there. Revenue productivity has been there. Would it be f more fair for you to say that the uh, TCV range should be 7 to 8 rather than seven to nine. Do you have that much skepticism over no. 24? No. Okay. So you I could, you could get TCVs above absolutely, eight? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, this seven point eight also, we have been on average above eight only. Yes. So I don't think that need to reduce the TCV range or to narrow it and down. Uh, there is enough, again, as I said, the qualified pipeline, which is the one step before yes. that, yes. is still continuing to grow, right? In absolute terms, it is continuing to um, grow. So there is no reason to uh, assume. It is the decision making that is uh, getting delayed. We are not hearing of project cancellations. Uh, we are not uh, seeing people stepping back and saying that, guys, put a hold on everything. It's more of uh, the delay in committing and starting of new um, programs. So the we are being to, warned about yes, time, time, so you ask your best question now. <laughs> no, no, uh, seven to nine billion dollar of a quarterly deal win run rate stays for FI24 as well, right? I think it's a fair one, absolutely. Okay. Does 26% now become a little more away from your reach margins? First target, get to 25% and then get 25 to you're nearer promised. to... 25 you're, you're saying is in the current quarter. We are looking forward to 25% exit in this uh, year and then we'll try to get to 26 as soon as possible. Welcome back and the TCS Top Brass is here. We have with us NGS, COO and Milind Lukard, the CHRO, actually the more <laughs> important person in a company like TCS. Gentlemen, congratulations actually for beating street expectations. I have a lot of negative scenario questions, but first the positive one, NGS. Uh, you know, 2.2% growth and an improvement in margins uh, is not a small achievement given the circumstances. So what led to that, you know, both these positives? Um, I think it's a very, very satisfying quarter, 13.6% year-on-year growth. Um, I think we stayed very focused with customers, you know, being part of them, working with them, put feet on the ground uh, to see what matters to them in these tough times. Uh, especially as they grapple with uncertainties in the macro side. Uh, what does it mean for them to stay ahead of the curve? Where is it that new technologies can help them bring efficiency, help them bring automation, and then at the same time um, work with them to define the future now? Right? Um, and I think that's what uh, really is. In a nutshell, I think um, it's about uh, cloud. Right. Everybody moves everything to cloud. and the, As you call the race to cloud. Yeah, race to cloud. And then uh, it's about, you know, you don't stop by moving to the cloud. You know, you keep improving it. You keep bringing in automation. The beauty of these digital technologies is that a new technology comes in. A new way of working comes in every month. Right. Mm. So, so short is the improvement possibilities with the result that customers are always willing to adopt something new. 
for bettering the growth, bettering the efficiency, and bringing innovation to differentiate themselves in the marketplace. Okay. Well, I have more on that, but uh, before that, Milind, uh, you know, while it is a large uh, number you hired in terms of freshers, the street is a little worried that your total headcount is actually a few thousands less. Okay. Is that preparing for likely fewer orders in this year? So, a uh, couple of points I would make. One is basically, if you look at year on year, we have uh, grown by 57,000 people. Yes. You know, so that's uh, almost 10 percent growth on the on the number which we had last year. And uh, you know, we also hired a lot of people uh, last year, and basically had close to 200,000. Yeah. And then a uh, uh, lot of uh, talent development over the last three quarters, and eventually they are getting deployed now. Uh, you know, in this quarter, and thereby. Increasing the utilization a bit and and also efficiency in the organization is is basically causing this headcount to come down. But actually, if you look at it, uh, you know, look at two years together, I think you will will be even. Yeah, but it's only the third time in, uh, you know, in the entire record of TCS yeah. quarterly that it is lower. So is there just a preparation? It is. Let's look at the orders and then hire. Let me let me assure you, it is nothing to do with demand. Okay. It is everything to do with efficiency and it is everything to do with investment which you made. Uh, and she just wanted to talk about your deal wins. In FY22, the total contract value or the deal wins went up by 10%. And that's helping you clock in a double digit growth this year in FY23. Nine months FY23 TCV is up only 3%. Does this not signal that growth next year will slow down? Um, I don't see, see it that way, but I think it's a function of the order book that we have, uh, for sure, that we have to keep executing it. Um, as we see it, there is a very strong pipeline. As I said, the qualified pipeline looks very good. In certain markets, the decision making has been a little slow, uh, but you know we don't attach to, too much to the macro situation and the client situation, because we work very closely with customers. If you look at UK, for example, when so much of uncertainty around, we have grown year on year that market by 15.4%. So I think across verticals, whether you know it's a broad-based order book that we have got, broad-based pipeline that we have got. So um, the kind of execution rigor that we have brought in, the kind of grow, growth that we are seeing in the cloud and uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning kind of work. So I think you know it all looks positive and. Um, give some weight for the macroeconomic uncertainties, especially in Europe, where the decision making will become clearer in the next six to eight weeks time. Mm. But there is a correlation between the deal win growth rate and future growth, right? Yeah. No, it is there, but some of them are multi-year deals. So you have to look at it from a perspective of, for example, whatever the deals that we clocked last year, it's um, typically it's not for just one year. It's yes. for a multi-year life cycle multi-year deal so in the short term if you really look at it for the order book that we have for the coming year 23 and 24 looks positive you know I mean I think we've got an order book which we have to execute well as long as we execute well which we are really good at uh, I don't see a particular challenge in it okay uh, just one more question about Europe uh, you repeatedly said in the press conference Europe is challenging and that's 15% of your revenues. Is it just slowness in decision making, or are you seeing deal cancellation, or no new order wins? What's happening in Europe? See, there, is, there are two ways to look at it, right? In these kind of uh, uh, certain uncertainties and um, amount of caution that the customers express, first thing is the cost and optimization, vendor consolidation, those kind of opportunities are really picking up in Europe, right? Those are the ones which are getting accelerated. So there is a consolidation opportunity, there is a market share gain opportunity for TCS. In that even industry. in Europe? Even in Europe. But on the growth and transformation side, people are wanting to get this winter over, right? And see that, look, in that sense that the next two months are going to be the key thing. But at the same time, they all recognize that the journey to cloud and journey to a cloud native microservices driven ecosystems driven architecture in which they want to redefine their future is um, irreversible. You know, mm. they've gone that path. The pace might take a little slow, but you know, if they delay it far too much, 
okay. then the technology change will be too huge. So you're saying the transformational deals are taking time. Those would be the high margin ones, Correct. right? Well, Milan, I wanted to ask you, how are the wage hikes in your off-site uh, categories? I mean, I'm trying to gauge how severe is the wage pressure abroad. Oh. I think what we have given last year, I think we don't expect that to change in the coming years. Okay, okay. Because so the, it is. Uh, so I think the macro uh, numbers are indicating wage pressures are stiff. Yeah, it is. It is there, but we have been able to. That's why we have been able to manage and and our operations efficiently and effectively, and just ensure that we actually do uh, similar to what we do normally every year. And I don't see that changing right now. So there is a pressure there. In so terms I of think, uh, but you know, we have to respond to those pressures very, very well, right? By by operating, operating it better, by b being able to price it better, all of our deals and all of those things come together, and thereby we have, we are able to do that. And I don't see actually again uh, see that changing in the coming years. Okay. Minute NGS, F, yeah, one minute. Yeah, sure. NGS, you were. Um, I just wanted to know whether there were sectors that gave you more orders. I'm looking at it from a macro standpoint. While there were pressures in, you know, for instance, retail and finance, Goldman Sachs has sacked people. We've heard positive things in commodities, metals. Do you all also service those sectors and did you find more orders there? It's a fairly a broad-based growth that we have seen. Uh, for example, retail, CPG and um, travel and hospitality grew upwards of 17-18% for us year on year. Banking financial services grew by 11%. Um, manufacturing grew by about 12 percent and rest of the verticals grew between 9 and 10 percent year on year. Okay. Even in the order book that we have, the pipelines that we have, both in terms of mid-sized deals as well as large-sized deals, is very, very broad-based across markets, across verticals. Okay. So even the large deal pipeline looks good. We are working on some key large deal opportunities which we hope to convert, you know, uh, going into the next financial year, right? So. Overall, you know, I do not see any um, uh, slowdown in terms of um, the deals that are coming into the pipeline, right? But the decision making in certain markets um, are a bit a tad low um, or delayed, given the uncertainties that they want to uh, so take into account. So, TCV to revenue may slow down. That is, book to bill may slow down. Uh, no, TCV to revenue will be uh, intact, okay. but making it into pipeline to TCV might okay. get delayed. Qualified pipeline to TCV. TCV yes, might so. get delayed a bit, specifically in uh, growth and transformation opportunities. Okay. Uh, Milind, uh, FI22 was a super normal year for employees of TCS, right? Not just in terms of wage hikes, but you gave a lot of bonuses, etc. cetera. Uh, do you think F next year uh, we will see an overall lower wage bill for TCS because like, attrition uh, is easy? Overall, including See, I think we'll, like I said earlier, we'll, I, I don't expect that to change, but we'll obviously play it by the year and see how the situation evolves and based on that make the decisions. How much may attrition ease, you think? Pardon? How much may attrition ease? No, I think, uh, you know, this uh, quarter itself, although LTM-wise we are 20 basis point lower, but if you look at quarterly annualized attrition, we are you know, six, close to 6% down. And I expect that trajectory to continue. Thank you very much, NGS. Thank you.